This is the fourth installment of this bow making course. That's what you've clicked on today. We'll get into the course in just a second. But first, I've got a playlist down below this video in the description that you can click on to go through every single video from start to finish if you would like. I just wanna wish you happy bow building. Thanks for clicking on this video. And if you're interested in supporting Shatterproof Archery, well, go to shatterproofarchery.com, get your bow making gear, your archery gear. New products are being added all the time. I am very grateful for everyone who has ordered and who will order. I'll see you guys around. Enjoy the course. Specialized bow making tools. We've got a couple of them. Some of them are really, really useful. Others are kind of in the middle. So the first thing is the tillering gizmo. Now there's a gentleman who came up with this concept. I don't know when, but I made a video giving him credit and how I, how I would build one of these. It's a really handy little tool. Basically, the pencil sticks right in the middle and you'll rub this on the belly of the bow and where the bow's bending the least, the pencil marks it and there you have it. Now you have an automatic mark on the bow where you should remove wood. This works fantastic for D bows and recurve bows. Reflex deflex bows, this isn't quite as good. You can still use it, but not for the entire part of the bow. So keep that in mind. A substitute for this is to use your scraper. If you've got a little six inch scraper, my favorite bow making tool, you can use that and eyeball the biggest gap. Where that biggest gap is, you just manually mark that with a pencil or a Sharpie depending on where you're at in the process and you'll be good to go. So the scraper can be used multiple different ways. I do think a tillering gizmo is super easy. I made a fancy one like this but these basic ones here made out of two by four are the ones that I saw on the website and they just have a little nut in it. I'll link the YouTube video to how to build this if you want it, or if you don't want to go to the trouble of building it, you could also pick one up from our website, but it's a handy tool, super simple to build if you want to build your own and it's, it's worth having around. We'll touch more on the tillering gizmos and the case studies where we build the reflexed bow and the Debo. The tillering string, here's three of them that I've been using for a really, really long time. And here's a much newer one that is packaged up for a customer. The tillering string is a must. It just is. You don't have to get a nice one like this. And let me share the purpose of it. The purpose of the tillering string is so that you can make adjustments on your string length before you get it to praise height. The nice thing about the tillering string is that with a bowyer's knot, you can continually shorten and shorten and shorten the string until you're at brace height. And then you can even tiller the bow all the way out and shoot it with the tillering string on. And then you can measure the tillering string that's on the bow at the brace height you like and make your bowstring or buy a bowstring of the length exactly what you need. That's what's really nice about the tillering string. I get asked all the time, can you use paracord as a tillering string? Yes, you can, but keep in mind it's going to stretch about four times more than the than a normal tillering string, which will give you a little bit of headache. It would be better to use something that's more like a cable. I'd rather use something that has zero stretch than a bunch of stretch. And so that's where the actual bowstring tillering string comes into play. If you want to make one of these, it's quite simple. You just do a normal Flemish twist loop and then continue that Flemish twist down for about 75 inches, tie a knot, and then at the knotted end, I throw some glue on it. It's real simple to make. It just takes 15, 20 minutes or so, but it is very, very handy and well worth the investment in some bowstring material or buying a tillering string. It's gonna be well worth it if you plan on making multiple bows. And the third specified tool we'll want for bow making is either a tillering stick or a tillering tree. I recommend if you're just getting started to use a tillering stick. Well, you can use a tillering tree as well. It depends your personality. Are you going all in gung-ho? Are you, are you kind of stepping back? I built my first 20 bows with a tillering stick before I even built a tillering tree. I have a video if you want to know all about tillering sticks and tillering trees linked below this video. So you can go check that out if you want the in-depth of tillering sticks and tillering trees. You can also substitute both of those if you want to for a mirror. Some people will literally use a mirror and they pull, look in the mirror and decide where to take off the wood. 
That is a difficult method, I believe, and I think it's uh, plenty worth it to do a tillering stick or a tillering tree. It doesn't cost anything but a piece of scrap wood. The one advantage we've got with the tillering stick over the tillering tree is that it's mobile, it's portable, it's small. You can move it anywhere and build bows anywhere with it. Now the advantage of the tillering tree, it has pulleys. You can step away from the bow so that when you break it, or if you break it, it shoots up in the air and it's not near you. That's really, that, that feels much safer. The second advantage of the tillering tree over the tillering stick is that you can exercise the limbs by moving the wood up and down much easier this way. The substitute when you're using the tillering stick for exercising the limbs is going to be pulling it back with your hands, which is a good practice here and there so that you can get the feel for the strength, but it's much safer and easier on your muscles over there. But Again, I built many, many Benny bows by exercising the limbs just by pulling it back with your hand. So it's up to you what you use. Now this here is a legitimate tillering cable. It's literally a cable. And I use this on fiberglass bows to check limb twist before I shave down the sides of the limbs. So this is a pretty advanced technique. I would not use a cable unless you actually have a fiberglass bow. I would use some sort of material that can stretch a little bit, like D97 or B55 or something like that. 